When it comes to how the War Thunder player base views the game, it seems that people are frustrated now more than ever. Despite Gaijin's efforts, including the recently created It's Fix series of dev blogs, many feel that nothing ever changes, or that it even gets worse over time. War Thunder certainly has a myriad of issues, but players want to know why the game isn't just being fixed. I do think there are some unrealistic expectations in that regard, especially when it comes to asking for updates dedicated purely to bug fixing. But since the majority of my content is focused on trying to improve War Thunder, the idea of making a video explaining why positive change is so stagnant was a no-brainer. Some of these explanations come directly from Gaijin, others are observations. This isn't meant to diminish what positive change Gaijin has done, as they do make a genuine effort. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, many of you are probably familiar with the term spaghetti code, and how it relates to War Thunder. To put it simply, spaghetti code occurs when code is written in a way that makes it unstructured and tangled, like noodles and spaghetti. War Thunder is famous for this, as problems are often created by changes that are in no way related to what is going wrong. In game development, it's well known that by getting rid of one bug you can often create two more, but War Thunder goes beyond this concept. It's important to remember that War Thunder is heavily based off of Gaijin's old work, work that goes as far back as 2008. If you look at IL-2 Birds of Prey, War Thunder's DNA is clearly evident. After 13 years, an engine update, and certainly a lot of employees coming and going, it's a safe bet that War Thunder's code is an absolute mess. One recent and famous example occurred when, after an update that didn't affect the vehicle at all, the A4 Skyhawk would crash the game of everyone in the match if it smacked into the ground. Gaijin failed to fix it once, but they were able to quash it later in the day. So Gaijin does implement fixes, it's just that they're often playing a game of whack-a-mole. Or maybe whack-a-bug would be more accurate. Second, the content they do focus on fixing is newer. I do a decent amount of bug reporting on the forums, and there's something I've come to realize. If you do not catch an issue with the vehicle either on the dev server or a few weeks after the update, it will take much, much longer to be fixed. A good example would be the stabilizers on the Shermans. It took nearly two years for those to be fixed. All that had to be changed was a single variable. I'm not exactly sure why Gaijin does it this way, but it can be annoying when your report is seemingly ignored. With the sheer breadth of content that exists in the game, I suppose it's inevitable that some older issues would be ignored. Third, some bugs are difficult to reproduce or fix. Generally, it isn't enough to just say this bug is happening to me. It could be dependent on your hardware, the state your hardware is in, what's on your computer, what your settings are, etc. Even when you provide all these details, some bugs still can't be reproduced on Gaijin's end, so they just ignore it. Bugs like ghost shells were fixed, there are some heavy air quotes there, multiple times because as it turns out, some bugs will have the same effect but vastly different root causes. There's also the recent issue with the tank driving instructor, where they keep constantly shifting gears when going up a hill. This was supposedly fixed, but it actually became worse after the fact. This issue is separate from but compounded by spaghetti code. Fourth, the War Thunder player base can be very split at times, at least when it comes to how War Thunders run. Group A might think a certain mechanic works perfectly well, but Group B might completely disagree. Both groups are usually isolated different platforms or websites, so they'll think they have the most common opinion. Gaijin will hear feedback from both groups, and they either won't know who holds the majority opinion, or they'll side with one and upset the other. At the end of the day, a lot of people are probably going to be unhappy. Take Overpressure for example. Many people were initially very happy with it, but now it's pretty split. I think most people agree it's an improvement over Whole Break, but that the mechanic is far too powerful as is. That being said, a lot of people think it's totally fine. This only really applies to gameplay changes or mechanics. I doubt that anyone thinks bugs are a good idea. And finally, fifth, sometimes these issues are beneficial to Gaijin. Overpowered premiums might be an issue for you and I, but for Gaijin, they're a very easy source of revenue. Same goes for the recent economic changes. You might be frustrated that you're barely getting any research or lines, but maybe that frustration will drive you to GE a vehicle or buy premium time. It's fairly obvious that, for the most part, this strategy is very counterintuitive, though some people will continue to give the game money no matter what. So there's that. To summarize, there are a lot of reasons why War Thunder is the way that it is. Some are technical, some are subjective, and some are due to the business model. Because of how content pipelines work, we'll almost certainly keep getting fixes in small but regular doses. I don't know if the positives will ever outpace the negatives, but one can hope. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.